quantum computer uh, technology is not, uh, you know, science fiction. It's already here. I mean, quantum computing is not science fiction anymore. It's happening quantum now. Quantum computing. Quantum computing. It's a new computing paradigm. When we say quantum technology, we mean taking concepts, uh, properties of phenomena from quantum physics or quantum theory, and directly from them, creating technology that solves a problem. It could be in different fields. Quantum technology in the broad sense includes, for example, quantum sensors, which are the most accurate or precise sensors there is, like uh, atomic clocks or quantum magnetic sensors or navigational sensors and so on. It could be in quantum cryptography, quantum key distribution, which is an ultra secure way to share uh, uh, secret keys between parties. And it could be, and this uh, gets the most uh, attention today in the world, in computing, which is the same thing as you do in regular computing, but with huge, huge uh, computational power. A quantum computer can take a few seconds or a few tens of seconds to solve some mathematical, statistical uh, model. And they've shown that the most, the strongest uh, high performance computer that, for example, Google has would take many months or many years even to solve that kind of problem. Quantum advantage is the point where a quantum computer will uh, overperform a classical one on a given task. So it can be either more accuracy, it can be a reduced computing time, or it can be the same performance but using less energy because our processor and all quantum processors in general are very low energy intensive. Today, pharmaceutical companies spend on average a decade and a billion dollars to develop a new drug. And the reason for that is that once molecules uh, that comprise these drugs reach uh, a few tens of particles, you can no longer simulate them because the high performance computers stop there, okay? In quantum computers, we'll be able to solve that kind of problems of material design or quantum chemistry exponentially more efficiently than what classical computers could do. And then you can imagine that developing a new drug will not take a decade of trial and error experiments because you cannot simulate it. It will take much shorter time and much uh, uh, lower cost. So this will impact health being and sustainability. Uh, the energy sector, because you know, it's, it's, they are facing really pressing issues right now, and quantum computing can help in the distribution of electricity, as an example. I mean, we have a use case, for instance, to, uh, to schedule the, uh, the charging of a fleet of electrical vehicles. Because if everyone is plugging his electrical cars on the, on the grid at the same time, you, know, you imagine what will happen, so you, you need to schedule that. And this is a, a complex computing task. And the third family of applications, which in, in maturity are kind of in between the optimization problems on the one hand and breaking codes on the other hand, is um, what people are uh, calling quantum machine learning or quantum AI. So for example, there are search algorithms. We are collaborating with a group in one of the hospitals in Israel in uh, performing a quantum search algorithm to see if we can find anomalies in DNA chains. A DNA chain is a huge amount of data and you want to find individual uh, anomalies or defects in these in order to be able to understand diseases better and to uh, have genet genetic therapy more uh, uh, individually tuned and more efficient. So you can use a search algorithm like that uh, to find it in a very efficient uh, uh, way. Another uh, example for uh, anomaly detection or, or quantum search algorithms, you can take, for example, the world of cybersecurity. In a cybersecurity, you know your uh, users in the network very well, but you don't know where are the vulnerabilities in the network. And if uh, an adversary finds a vulnerability and accesses the network through that, it can create a, a, a whole lot of uh, problems to the network. So searching for uh, anomalies or vulnerabilities in cybersecurity systems, for example, is another type of quantum search algorithm. Now, what are the challenges for players to go there? So it's the 
basically the challenge of scaling up while maintaining the performance. Quantum systems are very delicate. They are very much, uh, very easily disturbed by the environment. This is, by the way, the reason that there are also excellent sensors. That's the other, other side of the game. Um, so scaling up, controlling that, the amount of degrees of freedom that is added with each qubit to the system is a big challenge. And as I said before, it's a challenge both in the hardware and also in the co quantum software. If you compare all the companies today in the world, they are all working for more qubits, for better performance, mostly for better performance, and in some in some cases also faster performance. Because if in in your physical platform your uh, operation time or coherence time is limiting you, then you need each individual step along the way to be faster and faster, right? So these are the the three main routes: more, better, faster. I think the development of uh, applications in real world use cases is a real challenge because you know it's uh, uncharted territory and you really have to bridge this gap between, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, the, uh, the know-how of the end users and the quantum know-how. And, really, and at the end, you have to test on the real processors to assess if it is good or not. And for this, you, you, need, to, you, you need a lot of know-how. I mean, in the application sector, in machine learning techniques, in, in, in data science, and in quantum. And that's a real challenge. I mean, on top of the hardware one, you know, building a, a, a complex computer out of complex uh, systems, but this is engineering. We know how to we know how to do that. Today, you see that quantum computers are at the threshold. They are not yet commercially available for practical problems at scale. But you see, most of the Fortune 500 companies today in the world starting to uh, to play with this, to tune themselves and understand how ma how important is it to them to invest in the field and to go more and more deeply into the field. I think this is something that any serious uh, enterprise that has computationally complex uh, tasks, they have to do it today in order to be prepared for when, when uh, quantum computers will be ready to, uh, to tackle these problems.